Magandang magandang araw sa inyong lahat at welcome sa isa na namang informative at educational video kung saan ay tutulungan ko kayo na mas maintindihan ang mga concepts ng nursing at midwifery. Kaya kung ikaw ay isang nursing or midwifery student o di kaya ay isang registered healthcare professional ka na pero mas gusto mong paigtingin pa ang iyong nalalaman sa profesyong na pili mo, aba, nasa tamang channel ka. Ako nga po pala si Teacher Jeff Lay, isang registered midwife at registered nurse at clinical nurse educator at ako ang magsisilbing lecturer at clinical instructor nyo sa topic na 10 common childhood illnesses. Tara, simulan na natin. Another contagious disease that we can see in our patients who are still very young is what we call measles. Ano nga ba ang measles? Measles is a highly contagious viral infection that is caused by the measles virus. Tama po, virus po ulit ang nagkukos sa measles at hindi po bacteria. Now, measles can be spread through contact with respiratory secretions such as your mucus or saliva of an infected individual with measles. So, pag kayo po ay nakatouch or naka, naka, uh, you had direct contact with sa kanilang mga uh, mucus or yung sa kanilang mga saliva or laway, pwede po kayong ma-infect din ng measles. Now, you have to remember that the causative agent for measles is the measles virus which is a paramyxovirus. Okay, so malalaman po natin more about it on our next slide. How do we determine if a patient has measles or just another type of a fever or rashes? Maari po nating i-differentiate yung ating patients with measles by looking at the pathognomonic sign or yung mga determin determinants natin if the patient really has measles. Now, ano nga ba yung pathognomonic sign ng ating patients with measles? Makikitaan po natin sila ng tinatawag nating coplic spots. The mere presence of coplic spots inside the mouth will already tell you, signal you that your patient has missiles. Ano nga ba ang coplic spots? These are small white spots on a red background. So meron silang parang red na outline and then meron silang white spot doon that appears inside the mouth of your patient two to three days before the rashes appear. Kaya if you suspect that your patient has uh, missiles, dahil maraming nagkaka missiles sa inyong community, you can check their mouth. Inside their mouth, makikita nyo po, like the picture uh, that I uh, that I uploaded here, makikita nyo sila ng coplic spots and that will already tell you that the patient has measles. Now, what are the early signs and symptoms of measles? Okay, so before the appearance of the rashes, makikita natin ng high fever yung ating mga pasyente and it is usually accompanied by cough, meron silang pag-ubo, there is also runny nose or sinisipon din po sila, and there is also red, watery eyes. Those are the early signs of your measles. Now, after a few days po na, na nag-start yung kanilang fever, cough, runny nose, and red, watery eyes, magpro-progress na po yan. Okay? So there is a rash that appears on the face, and then it spreads to the rest of the body. So nagkakaroon po siya ng flat na rashes on the the face of the uh, uh, skin of the face and then it goes down to the rest of the body and the rash is usually accompanied by fever that can reach up to 104 Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. So nagkakaroon din sila ng high fever if there is already the appearance of the rashes. Now, what are the predisposing factors that are associated with your measles virus? Okay? Lagi nyong tatandaan that people with no previous vaccination against measles can have a greater risk of contracting the disease. Pag hindi ka po nabakunahan, maaari po ay magkaroon ka or mas mataas yung chance mo na magkaroon din ng measles na ito. Aside from that, you have to remember that infants, pregnant women, and people with weakened immune systems are at a greater risk for complication. Ibig sabihin po nito, mas grabe or mas malala po yung measles kapag ito ay tumama sa mga sanggol, sa mga buntis, at mga tao na mababa ang kanilang immune system kasi hindi nila kayang labanan 
ang sakit na measles kapag hindi pa si, pag mababa yung kanilang immune system. Now, how do we determine if a patient has measles? Paano natin ito idadiagnose? Diagnosis for measles is usually based on the characteristic symptoms and presence of complex spots. So, napag-aralan natin kanina yung mga different signs and symptoms accompanying your missiles. So, sa early signs, meron tayong uh, high fever accompanied by red watery eyes. Meron din siyang coughing and watery nose. And then, magpro-progress na po yan to the appearance of the rashes accompanied by a high-grade fever. So, yun pa lang. Pwede mo nang sabihin na, ah, this is a patient who is candidate for missiles. Pero, how do we confirm the presence of measles? Look at the inside of the mouth. Pag nakitaan mo po siya ng complex spots, that is already the pathognomonic sign for measles. And we can already say that the patient really has measles. But if the doctor still thinks that it can be something else, the doctor can do a blood test, series of blood tests to confirm the diagnosis. So, ano nga ba yung gagawin nila? maaaring gumamit po sila ng mga missile-specific immunoglobulin tests okay, or antibody tests. Now, pag sa test na ito ay nag-positive po yung immunoglobulin M ng ating pasyente. Okay? So, nag-take sila ng dugo, nag-positive yung IgM ng ating patient. This means that there is a recent infection. Okay? So, na maaaring nagkaroon na siya ng infection which is very recent. And a positive IgM test result is a strong evidence of a current or a recent measles infection. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, pag nag-positive po yung immunoglobulin M niya, maaari pong siya ay may current or recent measles infection. So, that will now confirm the diagnosis of our measles. Pero, Pag yung test naman po, ang lumabas ay positive IgG. This means that there is a past infection. Matagal na pong nangyari yung infection na ito. Or it can also be triggered because of a vaccination. Maaari pong meron siyang immunoglobulin G dahil nagpabakuna na siya in the past. A positive uh, IgG test result indicates that the person already has immunity to the measles virus. Therefore, hindi po yan measles yung kanyang sakit. The only way that we can determine if a patient has an active or as a recent or a current measles infection is the presence of the IgM. Pero pag IgG po ang nagpositive, ibig sabihin matagal na po siyang nagkaroon ng measles at meron na po siyang sufficient antibodies kaya hindi po Measles ang kanyang sakit, it may be other uh, conditions instead. Now, how can measles be spread? Lagi pong tatandaan that the virus is transmitted by direct contact with the infectious droplets or by airborne spread when an infected person breathes, coughs, or sneezes. Kaya po pag tayo ay nakahawak sa mga nahatsingan ng mga pasyente or mga soiled na tissues na ginamit niya or when we inhale the droplets or the airborne infection, okay? Kunwari, uh, umubo siya and we are inside the room, maaari pong makuha din natin yung measles virus. So, always remember po na pag alam natin how the virus can be spread, alam na po natin kung paano ito iiwasan. So, what do we do? As much as possible, mag -hand washing tayo if we come in contact with the patient or the used articles by the patient. Yung mga nagamit na niyang baso, nagamit na niyang tissue, kutsara. As much as possible is iwasan natin na tinatas ang mga ito. Or, if we can, we can use gloves to prevent us doing direct contact with these soiled articles. Ano? Aside from that, we can also ask the patient to use a mask para po hindi niya ma-spread yung virus using droplet and airborne. At tayo din po ay mag wear din ng mask para po hindi natin malanghap kung meron mang mga virus na nandoon sa ating room. Okay? Now, you also have to remember that treatment for 
um, missiles is non-specific. Ibig sabihin po, wala po tayo talagang sinusunod na specific policies on the treatment of missiles kasi po, again, it is palliative in nature or we treat the symptoms as they come. Ibig sabihin, kung ano po yung nakita nating problema or kinocomplain ng ating pasyente, yun po ang ating ititreat. Now, what can we do as healthcare providers? We can give supportive care to the relief of symptoms of our patients. And how do we do that? Number one is we allow the patient to rest. I-encourage po natin sila na mag-complete bed rest as much as possible para po lumakas yung kanilang resistensya at para po malabanan nila yung virus. Aside from that, we tell them to take in fluids. Dapat po ay uminom sila ng maraming tubig at pwede din po natin silang bigyan ng uh, IVF based on the doctor's order. And also, we can give them fever-reducing medications. Okay? So, magbibigay tayo ng antipyretics kapag sila ay may high-grade fever. Sir, bakit tayo magbibigay ng fluids? Madedehydrate po ba sila? Hindi po. Ang reason po pag bakit tayo nagbibigay ng maraming fluids or IVF sa ating mga pasyente is that we want to as much as possible decrease the temperature of our patients kasi lagi niyong tatandaan, meron po silang high-grade fever kapag sila ay mayroong measles. Kaya dapat po i-encourage natin silang uminom ng madami para po bumaba yung kanilang temperature while we are still waiting for the effects of the antipyretic medications that we gave them. Aside from that, Antibiotics may also be prescribed Pero hindi po ito lalaban sa virus na nagkukos ng missile Because like I said, virus ang nagkukos ng missiles Pero sir, bakit tayo nagbibigay ng antibiotics? Similar din, similar din po ito sa pagbibigay natin ng antibiotics sa chicken pox Antibiotics may only be prescribed if there is secondary bacterial infection Umuubo or may sipon yung pasyente, maaari pong magkaroon siya ng pneumonia along with measles. So that's the time that the doctor will give antibiotics not to treat the measles but to treat the underlying bacterial infection that may occur along with your measles. Aside from that, we should also monitor and manage the symptoms of our patients. So, iti-check po natin yung kanilang mga vital signs. And then, pag nag-complain sila ng itchiness, pwede natin i-report sa doctor so that the doctor can give antihistamines. Pag meron silang fever, we give... Uh, we can give antipyretics pero pag sila ay nag-complain ng discomfort or pain maaari din po tayong magbigay ng analgesics aside from that we can also provide emotional support to the patients and families always remember po yung mga pasyente natin na nagkakaroon ng fever sila po sometimes ay very young and our uh, patients the, their watchers are very apprehensive are very anxious din sila sa condition ng ating pasyente and the best thing that we can do to give them comfort or emotional support is to educate them regarding the uh, the virus in itself or the disease in itself para po hindi na sila manerbios ay bigyan po natin sila ng karambatang education regarding what the virus is the signs and symptoms the treatment that are available and also the preventive measures that they can do so that it will not spread to their other children pero pinakamaganda ulit na sabihin natin sa ating mga pasyente is that they should go for vaccination. Kasi vaccination po is an important nursing and midwifery responsibility because we want to prevent the spread of this disease in the community. So sabihin po natin, ma'am, maaari po bang ipabakunan niyo po lahat ng inyong mga anak and, uh, against missiles? para po ay hindi na mag-spread ito sa ating komunidad. So that we can also protect ourselves and others, we have to have ourselves vaccinated. So yan po yung mga pwede nating gawin sa ating mga patients to treat missiles and also to prevent its spread. At dyan na po nagtatapos ang ating pre-recorded video lecture para sa topic na missiles. Sana po ay marami kayong natutunan sa akin. And you can support my channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing my contents to the people you know who can benefit from this information. Again, ako po si Teacher Jeff Lee at nag-iiwan ako sa inyo ng maraming maraming salamat for listening and enjoy the rest of the day.